Hello, human peoples. You're listening to the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. Support us and gain access to great exclusive podcasts like Fox Mulder is a Maniac, Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and our latest show, Spiel Boys. Head over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. We do game streaming, movie nights with our patrons every Friday night, and you can even commission your own podcast about anything you want. Literally anything, within reason, and we have to do it. You are quite frankly out of excuses not to go visit patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. The bigger the lie? The bigger the spy, the bigger the lie. Okay. Okay, that checks out. Yeah. (laughs) Or does it? I guess it's one of those things. It's like hi everybody. Hello everyone. I was gonna say it's like a, it's like a if you ain't first you're last sort of thing. Yeah. Or it's he, like I don't know. It rhymes. It uh, must make sense. He throws it back at Gary Cole at the end. He's like, oh shit, that doesn't make any sense. You could be second <laughs> or third. Exactly. Uh, my name is David Bell. My name is Tom Ryman. And we just watched Argyle. Ar- Argyle. Argyle, two L's. The film about the adventures of a pair of socks. Hmm. Yeah, kind of. You're Ellie freaking Conway. I am such a fan. Oh, yeah? What is it you do? Sign my book. Espionage. Here we go. Come on. (laughs) Just two socks. Socks with faces drawn on them. Might as well be with there. Uh. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, fuck, man. What is this? This is just a Monday. We don't have any patrons to thank. I'm so I was like getting ready to thank a patron. No, but uh, we, we just, just have get to thank to, we ourselves. Just get to thank ourselves and and the universe and. Yeah, this is a movie um, where everybody <laughs> stop there. Do this exactly. Is movie. <laughs> this is a movie. Uh, this is a uh, this is a movie where everybody knew exactly what it was uh or the main twist of where it was we we've talked about it for a while it's matthew vaughn who i i like uh, (laughs) it's early stuff at this point he's sort of dropped off for me the kingsman stuff has sort of lost me uh we, we could talk about that but um uh this is not uh getting good reviews did you know that tom uh i'm not I didn't know that. I'm not super surprised, but um. yeah, it's a it's a spy movie. It's about an author who's the stuff she's writing. I don't know why I'm explaining the plot of Argyle. It's it's the long kiss goodnight. What? How'd you how'd you like this movie, Tom? Dave, I liked it. <laughs> Dave, oh, let me let me tell that's... you let me tell you why. It's just now you see me. It's just another now you see me. Yeah, so it's like exactly that level of movie. It's like a a, a movie that is cute and clever enough for you to watch with your parents but that's it so uh, yeah i i wouldn't call this one of those clever it's not really it's clever in the way that now you see me is clever where it keeps adding these escalating twists that do not make sense if you think no it's all very dumb but um yeah uh, it's it's one of those things where i just i didn't care because everybody is so charming in it and it's just a very light kind of breezy adventure movie and i like sam rockwell and 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 bryce dallas howard together it was just it's this is a dumb movie that is not good and i love it it's like this is this is in the in the same area this occupies the same real estate as congo in my mind oh that's interesting this is is a bad movie that i i I, well i wouldn't even call it bad but it's no it's bad it's it's, i will i want to talk about why it's bad i wouldn't call it bad but it is a b movie um, that yeah, is, I know, that I know is, what you're saying. That is more charming than it than it should have been for the way that it was written and constructed. But it's just everybody they got to make the movie was just so damn talented that it dra- for me it dragged this like ridiculous script <laughs> right. out, out of what would be bargain bin Netflix territory and into something that I am definitely going to watch again. I hope they make every Argyle adventure into a movie because i'll watch them all with henry cable and his stupid haircut (laughs) 
I I didn't see. I didn't have the same experience. I was. I uh, all right. So I don't hate this movie. I I kind of want people to watch it because I found the movie fascinating, and kind of out of its mind. In that, to me, this felt like a a colossal swing, and it was just a complete miss because I genuinely am not sure what they were trying for for most of this movie. I thought it. I thought it was way too long. It did start dragging for me. Um, I agree that there's massive talent. Everybody behind this is talented and charming. I think it it all again was a lot of misses for me. Like none of the jokes landed. The action is all CGI, so like I got nothing from the action. I do want to. I it do want to. I do want to talk about that because that's not the point of the action in Matthew Vaughn's movies, and very much not the point of the action in this movie. I don't think. I, well, here's the thing. I don't know what the point of the action in this movie was because the movie does something right away. It presents a fake spy world, right? Yes. It starts in a fake spy world. It's her book, right? Mm-hmm. And the action is notably over the top. Right. He grinds a rail like a, like like he's doing a sick trick in Tony Hawk with like a, a, a four-seat all-terrain Jeep. Right. <laughs> like a little, little rinky-dink little Jeep that he steals. But I have two movies I want to compare that to. Uh, actually, no, just just one. I don't know. Uh, so, like, I was thinking about you, Fast and the Furious during that scene, and right, it's parroting it, right? Sort of. It's doing the. the it's it, well, continue your thought. Well, it's it's saying like here's a bunch of cliched plot lines and dumb dialogue and dumb action. And so what you then expect, of course, is that the actual movie won't have those things, but it has all those things too. And I don't know why, what they're saying by that, because it felt like I was with them. I was like, yeah, that is dumb CGI over the top action. That's not very impressive. Um, And then it's like, and here's that. Here's a bunch of that and bad plot points and bad dialogue and bad action that's just like her fantasy there was no there was no difference um it was just as absurd and cartoony in both and so like right away i was like wouldn't that be wouldn't you want it to be grittier or something now there is a movie that plays with this um that i was thinking of last action not last action hero actually yeah it does a little bit yeah Last Action Hero does the the right thing, right? It has the gritty uh, over the top action, sorry. And then it has the gritty action and it's making a commentary about how what we see in action movies is not what violence is like in real life. And then I was thinking of True Lies where the action is over the top the whole time, but you have a character who's like I can't believe this is your life, a character that's supposed to be boring. Neither fit for me. Like neither of those tones worked for this. So like that that idea of like we're going to present this over the top spy world and now here's the real world which is the exact same thing i didn't understand that to the point that the characters look the same which i i want to talk about like that that was like did that do you know why they did that like why would matthew vaughn decide to make the action i would say more ridiculous in real life than the spy novels that didn't land for me at all I don't. I wouldn't say it was more ridiculous. Um, I mean, it's, it's, the it's, ice skating. I know. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's on par. <laughs> um, it's on it's, the same level. It's it's um. What starts to happen is she's seeing Sam Rockwell, but also seeing him as Henry Cable. Like right. on the train fight scene, she'll re- and in the apartment when they have to fight a bunch of dudes, she'll keep seeing uh, Sam Rockwell as as Henry Cable, who does who's doing all the things that Sam Rockwell is doing, but he's doing it cool and effortless and looking like really graceful while he's doing it. And meanwhile, Sam Rockwell right. looks like a drunken master, like just it's, right. it's sloppy and by the seat of his pants. I think that's the, the tonal shift that he's going for. Yeah. That's not good enough. I um, sure. Um, yeah, I, 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 I yeah. When they're like dancing, fighting in the hallway, and the it's yes, just this but you big... s- you see that they're not actually doing it. Like if you if you watch the uh, if you see the 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 feed, at least that's how I interpret it. If you see the feed that Brian Cranston is looking at, they are still kind of dancing and in rhythm, but they're not doing the huge ballroom dancing that they're doing when it shows the scene with them together with all the colored smoke. I'll accept that, and then the the sliding on the oil shit. 
Um, which, as far as I can tell, she's supposed to be actually doing. Yeah. And that, again, is, I thought, complete, like, that's just I mean, so that's, weird and the, over the top. Spoilers, we find out it's in the Kingsman universe where there was a woman with knives for, for feet. Like, this is just, right. it's, that's, it, I think it's, Matthew Vaughn's movies from, like, Kick-Ass on take place in this cartoon version of reality. Right, um, which. It, that's, I mean, it's, it's. And that's just what his bag has been. That's the entire tone of the Kingsman movies. And that's the tone of, of this movie. Yeah, the only difference is between is, is showing that Henry Cable looks really calculated and graceful and precise when she's imagining him doing it. And then it's Sam Rockwell is very sloppy and goofy and just kind of scraping through it. Um, like the end scene of Unforgiven when when his when William Money's whole mystique gets right. demystified. That's the only thing. And they lose it pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I, they, I, I'll give yeah. you that. It's what, because the reveal is that the stories are real life, though. Like the right. re, the reveal this is, is the, that everything that happened in the books happened in real life. This is sort of the problem. That's, that's is one like, of eight reveals. Right. Yeah, we'll get to that. The so, I I still I'm stuck on this because I think for most people it didn't work. Mo, I've seen a lot of people sure, who yeah. are like I don't quite under, and, and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but like. The, so I have a few things. The Kingsman universe. There's a reason I stopped watching those films. I do, I, never, and we can talk I have about why. Never seen a single one. Okay, yeah, I don't like that universe in terms of action. I don't think I. Uh, so like, the best I can compare it to is when you watch a movie and there's a juggler in it. I know this is a weird comparison. No, I'm with you. you yep. Okay. Um. Or oh, so here's a better comparison: a musical. No, you pick the um, juggler. All right, well, a musical with jugglers. You want to see a musical actors, about jugglers. Yeah, you want to see actors sing and dance, right? Like that's the point of watching a musical is to watch actors sing and dance. It doesn't have to be; it can be doubles, but you're watching that artistry, right? Yeah. Like, is that safe to say? Matthew Vaughn does these action movies that are like on level of schwarzenegger like brawling and stunts but he does it all in cg and so i just don't understand it i just fundamentally get nothing from watching like like it's, bryce dallas howard cgi skating around when you can go watch the transporter and see a very similar scene done by a stuntman or jason statham but for real you know what i mean where he's sliding on the oil and shit yeah where it's like i don't i don't get anything from that i just don't it's, um, it's looney tunes Right, and it's and you're, easily you're, you're, replicated by humans. Yeah, uh, well, not easily. You can't skate on two. Well, knives. you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, it's. I think it's the. Um, it's Looney Tunes. Uh, that's yeah, and, and that's it. You're either you either with it or you're not. Like the the point right. the point of this movie isn't the action as much. There is still a lot of choreography. Um, it's and like like not all of the action is CG. There is a lot of fighting that is just choreography. Right. Um, but like the big CGI moments, I think Matthew Vaughn still understands what the Fast and Furious movies have forgotten. That is that which is if that is going to be your thing, they have to be big and goofy and ridiculous and high concept. See, that's the thing. I would argue it's not big and goofy enough for me. Sure. After movies like RRR and Kung Fu Hustle, like the movies that also do this, it's just I that's the that's my issue is like. Like I said, someone skating on oil, I've seen versions of that done by actual stuntmen. Like her, the, him jumping out of the back of a train and paragliding. It's like, well, I've, I've seen real versions of that. So it just feels like they don't want to do the work and they're just do it, like kicking it off to CGI. Because to me, it's not over the top enough to justify that. It's not well, that, that two one, guys that on each other's not. shoulder flipping around yeah. and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and so that was my issue where I'm watching it and I'm like, it's not, the spectacle isn't big enough for me to love this. So like, and it's not a stunt. So it kind of falls in this like in between world where I'm just not, my eyes just sort of glaze over. Uh, but like, I mean, I'm sure everybody has their own, you know, their own limit or their own taste for this. But personally for me, it was like, it wasn't zany enough and it wasn't uh, r- real. So the, it just, I didn't have anything. But 
I still don't, I guess I still understand, like, why would he make, why would he start in a book and tell everybody, okay, we're starting here, look at this ridiculous world, and then the reveal is that it's in the king, like, that, I took that as almost like he was making fun of his Kingsman movies, like he was saying, like, yeah, these are like my Kingsman movies in her book. And then we're going to go to the real world. And then the twist is the real world is also the Kingsman zany world. And well, that didn't do anything for me either. Sure. I mean, it's a gradual because th- the first train sequence is uh, the first train sequence. The first action sequence is the sequence on the train, which is pretty grounded. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. That's, it, the, that, it's a, it's, that's when I thought they were going to do grounded action because I was like, OK, yeah. this is this is like regular. And then it slowly ramps up. Exactly. It's the slow it's it's the slow introduction of crazier and crazier things until the penny drops that she is Argyle. She's been Argyle the whole time. Everything she wrote right. is real. The, that shit happened in the real world. That's right. I mean, it just it, it, it sounds like it just didn't land for you. No, which it is, didn't. I, which I is, see what he's going for yeah. is that you, you it's the slow. The reveal is, yes, that ridiculous spy world is what we're in. I just. We've, I've seen enough of that with him, so I was like, "Sure, eh. yeah." It um, and of course, they. I did. I was kind of because remember when we talked, we we sort of predicted that the reveal that she's Argyle would happen pretty early, and it didn't, which was wild to it me that they that, that the was half, in fact at about the halfway point. Well, yeah, a little it's bit a past little the over. halfway, but not not too much. And they make it this huge reveal that it's like, yeah, we know. Um, and I would argue that all the other twists didn't land for a very specific reason for me. Okay. Which is that, so they do the thing where, I mean, would, are these the same twists you're, ta- you're, you're thinking of? Uh, She's yeah. bad again, suddenly bad, right? And she shoots Sam Rockwell. Well, that's not really, uh, uh, sure. That's, that, that is not one of the ones that I was thinking of. Okay. That, that's just like a yeah. standard story beat that goes hand in hand with the total recall reveal that he was Hauser the whole like Hauser was evil. Yeah. So like the reveal is it's a double reveal that not only did she, was she agent Argyle but Argyle was apparently bad. Um, but like in that moment you do, it's you don't I'd never actually believed that she was I thought that she did some like she Same. aimed specifically at Sam Rockwell's chest so that she shot him in a non lethal way and lo and behold she did. So I, I wouldn't count that as a reveal as one of the reveals. Well, but that's I like, the thing. One of the ones I'm thinking of is like the reveal that Brian Cranston supposedly her dad, and of course it finally yeah. finds not the re- the reveal that she's Argyle. I, yeah, I guess the reveal that she's evil, and then there's like an another. I feel like there was well, there's one two more. reveals at the end. <laughs> there's like, oh right, there's the Kingsman reveal that it's been a Kingsman prequel the whole time. <laughs> right, which is off. Ugh. Um, and then the the weirdest one. So. For the record, the first three we mentioned were things I had written down previously. Like, they did the thing where they're like, the, you don't see her dad. And I was like, oh, it's Brian Cranston. Um, and then and then obviously we all knew the reveal that she was Argyle. And then when she, yeah, when she turns evil, she does it twice. They have her turn evil, shoot him. And I'm like, well, by the rules of movie, like, obviously Sam Rockwell's not dead. We've been, you know, and of course she's good. And then they do a sleeper agent thing, which I was like, why? Why didn't they do that to begin with if they if they could like Manchurian candidate her? And I don't know why we're spending time on it. Like she turns multiple times and we sort of know in the end, like, well, we're not watching a we're not with this characters for two hours just to watch one of them go evil and kill the other. And so it just felt like I don't know, it just I, I was just like wait like waiting for it to be over. But then the the twist Th- I didn't just... expect and I Oh go ahead. Oh, just the twist I didn't expect that I still don't understand is the Henry Cavill reveal as so she's at the end she's giving a Q&A like she did at the beginning uh, uh, as an author again and then Henry Cavill stands up with a mullet and says something like yo you didn't expect to see me and she recognizes him and he knows he's who he is what what was that? What is going on there? I assume he's another spy that she wrote into her book. Yeah, I guess so. That he knows, yeah, that he knows he must be in the book. I mean, probably if he knew her beforehand, like if they worked together on some mission and he's reading the Argyle books and there's this dude that's described like exactly like him, except but, with a different haircut. But that doesn't, that's, see, that's the problem 
is how do you describe Henry Cavill but with a different haircut? His like no offense to Henry Cavill, I love him, but he's a tall, white, muscular guy, and the only distinctive thing about Argyle in the book is the haircut. Well, so like that's why I was like, I don't. <laughs> why does? Why would he know that he looks probably the at, same way the bad guys knew as she described exact situations and conversations? But she's Argyle. That's true. So like. He, that's what I mean. She's describing herself as him. Well, we don't. So it. I mean, like he, you said, it's now you sue me. It's yeah, nonsense. it's now you sue me. It's nonsense. It, like he, I don't. He, he could have shown up in the it. in the movie as he could have shown up in the book as anyone. Right, but yeah, there's like it's just stuff like that where I like I, Sam. Like we can Sam do Rockwell, the work. Sam Rockwell is revealed to be John Cena, but he's not described that way. You know, like exactly. It's, yeah. I, I assume. But it, I assume he was he just another exactly, character or something. Why does he look exactly? And then, like, is there a John Cena out there? Because the other idea is that once Sam Rockwell was revealed to be John Cena, and she's revealed to be Argyle, the idea then, right, is that her mind's eye is picturing these people that look nothing like the actual people. So why would Henry Cavill look exactly like a guy, but not be Argyle either? And so, like. I we can I can do the work for the movie and go like yeah there must be a guy who looked like that and maybe there's a guy who looked like John Cena and maybe he read the book and like recognized other things in the book that were him but like it doesn't translate to this punchy moment you know what I mean where you see him and you automatically just go like oh like it doesn't make sense it made me go like what <laughs> cuz as everything they've presented doesn't fit with that right that he's an avatar for her just like john cena is an avatar for him and like how does he know and how i don't know it's very weird is it, it's all very awkward and it 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 uh, it mostly short-circuited my like i mostly watched this movie with my jaw open because i was like i can't believe the the audacity of this film which is to say again that i i think i enjoyed it well, this it movie struck me as... It didn't make any sense. Well, I mean, it, this movie struck me as Archer, the movie, in mm. a lot of ways. Um, I just... So I, I didn't... So I, I thought about the logistics of the spy work and everything exactly as much as I do with Archer. Right, that's a good way of thinking it. I think Now You See Me is a good point because Now You See Me is a profoundly dumb movie. And I think you can enjoy that movie by laughing at that movie, right? Like that is, there's nothing clever in the movie. It's not like the prestige or something where you're like, wow, what an amazingly written film full of sophisticated twists and turns. Mm -hmm. It feels more like you're playing make believe with a child, right? Where they're just throwing out random a very, a very, bullshit. Very serious people too. And now you see me, which is part of the, part of what makes that movie a treasure is everybody's so serious about this magic. Yes. Um, yeah, that's just th this completely movie, This movie's a little bit different because everybody's really on and charming um, as opposed to <laughs> Now You See Me. Uh, it's just right. what they're, they're just saying and doing ridiculous, impossible shit. Like, I mean, the spy shit's not any more impossible than... I mean, it is a little bit more impossible because <laughs> oh, they filmed it's, it for it's, real. But, like, it's... <sighs> it's nonsense. It's the spy, all, he, it's, there's a part where he I has mean, to upload something. Dude, we watched 60 years of James Bond. Like it's Oh yeah. This is not new territory. And it's No, I, not I, at all. I think it's I think it's a little bad faith to try to hold well, not it's it's This is a movie to me that is kind of silly on its face. So I think that needs to be baked into how you view it. I, at least, at least that's how I that's how I approach I know what it. You're, like it's, I know what you're saying, which is that if it's a com comedy, is a, a fairly like I'm not saying this is a bad thing. Comedies have different rules; they get more leeway. Meaning that when you watch Austin Powers, you're not picking it apart for plot lines, and then, well, right? they, the comedies more explicitly don't take place in the real world no movie does right. like no movie does but comedies right. are the ones that are the least worried about letting you know that yeah my issue is that i didn't laugh once watch sure, if, yeah, if you're um, not liking it then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's sort of like this idea of like i've seen a lot of defensive like i don't know why critics 
don't like this. It's a fun, silly, dumb movie. Just relax and like it. And it's like, yeah, I just didn't find it fun and silly. I The action did nothing. Um, the jokes didn't work. And I think the world is bad. I, I, again, I did kind of enjoy watching it, but not... I wasn't with it, you know? Like, I was laughing at it, not with it kind of situation. Again, like, now you see me, where I... I'm not sure, like, like now you see me. I think there's some amount of camp, right, where they sort of know that. Although it's it's it's, it's so hard so, to tell. They're, they're so serious. I would lay camp on the at the feet of Argyle before I did. Right. Now you see me. It's so hard to tell because Argyle. I think the problem is, is that I kept trying to figure that side of it out, which is like, what do they want me to think? I think and what, so, I, like, what it seems to me is what if the campy sci-fi James Bond world of super spies was actually the way it fucking worked. Right. Which is, I, I think they, I, but they just, they don't have like Bryce Dallas Howard is never, we don't have an audience in for that. Like I understand why it didn't land like that for, and, may, and maybe this would have helped it land like that, but you're right. Uh, you pointed, I forget which movie you brought up earlier, but there's a character that's pointing out that all of this is insane. Yeah. Um, so, um, true lies. True lies. There you um, go. Jamie Lee Curtis. We don't have a Jamie Lee Curtis in here. Bryce Dallas Howard is, she's a little overwhelmed by it at, at first, but like, I mean, obviously it's, it's hard not to believe it when people show up and are shooting at you. So that, you know, you, here's okay. It, it, but I, I see what you're saying. Cause there's never, she she never we never have a character that interrogates the world as as much as you feel like somebody would if they had this realization dropped in their lap it's like wait archer is real like that's really how it works like somebody would they never have somebody push back against that and i think maybe that would have helped it land a little bit better yeah i would also seriously what i think i, I think i can articulate this in true lies the action like it's all it real and true lies. Tunes. Yeah, it, it exactly. will. It does like, get Looney Tunes, well, but they do, they do most of it for real, and it's it's mostly with the pretense of being grounded. But most yeah. of true lies. She is drops fucking a gun Looney Tunes, and it kills dude. everybody. He shoots it's the very, bad guy on a rocket into another helicopter, dude. It is Looney Tunes. <laughs> it is Looney Tunes. Uh, that's why I'm I'm trying to articulate this, uh, okay. which is that in true lies. The events go over the top, right? Yes. Um, but y- y- they do. They do like slowly more, ramp it's in more restrained. And the Looney Tunes, yes, the Looney Tunes aspect is still fairly restrained, where it's like it's your standard action Looney Tunes. I would say for the time. Definitely this, for the my time. My issue, yeah. my issue is that she writes this over the top spy novel. So right away, the movie again presents this idea of like, look at this ridiculous world. Now here's the grounded real world. And what we learn, like you said, is that it's not just that she learns that there's this secret wacky spy world. It's that she has to learn that physics are different, that people, she starts acting different. Everybody has to act different in order for this world to exist. Does that make sense? Where it like fades into a different type of movie by doing that, where, where she's fucking, again, skating around on knives um, well, that was and, part of it, right? Because she couldn't accept who she was, so she's like, "Well, let's dress up like the characters. Maybe that'll maybe that'll help you." Right. It just feels like it's 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 not the world opening up. It's a completely different world all of a sudden that we have to accept, where everybody's kind of doing things that are very stupid and weird, and like, like you know, like at the part where they're like. I, I don't quite understand why they were like, you have to dress up like the characters all of a sudden um, and include just go dye your hair. They, uh, well, I mean, that was a long kiss. Good night reference right on its face. I yeah, mean, I she, guess they, so. they made her look like Gina Davis in the end of long kiss. Good night. They did. But then they give Sam Rockwell the hair. Yeah. They, they also, they also <laughs> give him the, yeah, they give him Argyle's hair. And that was to, again, it doesn't, maybe having somebody say this out loud, I guess. But I, I mean, the idea is that she realizes she's the real agent Argyle, but she's actually still just Ellie Conway. She's still this other person. She's timid. She's afraid. She doesn't know how to be the super spy that she secretly is. So they dress her up like the character so she can just, and in the, when she's in the room with um, Rebel Moon, uh, she, she finally gets it where she's been seeing Henry Cable the whole time. And she's like, Oh, I just need to 
do what I think Argyle would do if I was writing him. And that's what she starts doing in that moment is she's just, well, I know what the character would do. So I'm just going to start doing that instead of. Give uh, her the Argyle hair then. Give her. She the... should have had the Argyle hair. I appreciated the long kiss goodnight reference though. Yeah, I guess. I mean, she's doing the hair of the woman in her novel at the beginning um, e- for the dance scene. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. I took it as long as goodnight. Yeah. But like that, that part, Samuel Jackson just sort of says you have to dress this way. And I, it just, it's that thing where like they well, wanted no, Sam to Rockwell look that sa- way. Sam Rockwell says, well, maybe dressing the part will help you. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's dumb, but like there, it's, it, uh, there is a sentence explaining why they do yeah. that. <laughs> this sort of stuff, it's, it's nothing like you, like, again, uh, it's not clever, right? Like it's not, same with, not really. Um, There's, I thought there was some fun little little things in it, but it's not like it is. It's definitely in the now you see me realm of cleverness, where the movie will surprise you, but mostly it's just because you didn't know those were part of the rules. Um, right? Or, or like, well, not that's well, like the ice skating scene is like like that's the biggest moment where you're like, oh, okay, anything goes now. <laughs> <laughs> when she starts right, skating around, but like, but like, for example, the Brian Cranston reveal, I just wasn't thinking about it. Like you, I think you, I, I, because I was with the movie, so I was just kind of going with it, like on a, like I wasn't sitting there thinking about who her dad was. So that one hit me. I was like, oh, maybe this will be interesting because I was taking it at face value. But then they immediately right. undermine that. Like they, it's Sam Rockwell. She's like, no, they're not your real parents. And then that becomes another twist where they just. They, he and Catherine O'Hara, who we haven't even mentioned yet. <laughs> right. Well, the issue is that her, yeah. when you go into the movie knowing that she's Argyle, when you see, when I saw her, her, her mom, I was like, well, that's not her real mom, right? Oh, I didn't Because I, I didn't, know the twist. I, didn't I know the twist of the movie. I didn't, that she's, so did oh, okay. I, and I didn't necessarily think that. I, I assumed Catherine O'Hara was her mom. Oh, okay. And just yeah, didn't I just, know about her spy life, like true lie I, style. I just I started from that because she mentions the skating accident, which is a pretty sweaty. But again, like we all we all knew she was Argyle. And so like going into it, knowing she was Argyle, I just right away. A lot of the like where he's where he sure. But you're not Sam Rockwell says that she needs a bullet in the head. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's talking about her alter ego. Like you're not knowing that she was Argyle. I, I guess a lot of that stuff didn't land, but that's not. That's not the movie's fault. That's the movie's yeah, marketing's yeah. fault. Yeah, and I think that's also because I did. I also knew that um, going right. in. Um, I think that's more in how you sort of. Uh, oh, I lost what I, I lost my thought. <laughs> I don't. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think you were saying that since the movie wasn't working on me, I had more time to think about it, what was going on because that's definitely no, that happening. Like, yeah, that was oh, okay. It, it, it was something about the the twists specifically i I don't remember it's fine all right i just yeah like i said it's a lot of things and none of them for me felt like they were completed or that they fully realized what they were they all felt half committed um oh i i I, like i remembered what it was even going even going in knowing that she's argyle it was still like well i don't know how complicit she is in in this deep cover. Like, I don't know if she did this willingly. Like, I don't know if this is a total recall situation. I don't, you know, like, so there's still, there was still plenty of questions for me knowing that she was Argyle. When she said the accident at the beginning, I assumed it was long kiss goodnight style where, or Jason Bourne, you know? Right. But in long kiss goodnight, her husband and, and kids didn't know. Right. No, they didn't. They didn't, but her mom, her da- her I fake just, ass dad, David Morris knew. <laughs> uh, the diff- yeah, the, that's the thing is parents. It would be different, right? Because if you can marry someone, they don't know your whole life, but the mom would know her whole life. Possibly, that's, do Arnold's parents why, know he's a spy in True Lies? Like, I, I, I don't, don't know. I don't think it's as foregone a conclusion also, as you're suggesting. Is my point? I mean, she's also like really pressuring her to finish the book too. And so it just like it was one of those things where it was just so many red flags about that character. Why would we even have the character? You know, where I was just like, okay, well, she's to show that she has a complete life. To yeah, that yeah, you're looking at it like a writer, and I just answered it like a writer. Why do you have that character to show that she has a life? Why do we need to see that so we can trick you later? 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it, I maybe I am coming at this a lot from a writer's perspective, but that's what I mean. Where it's like, it just felt like it's a lot of bullshit, and none of it felt very clever or fully. You know, like you look at, you look at his like layer cake Matthew Vaughn's first film or you look at Guy Ritchie's film where they introduce a lot of elements right and the idea is the elements all come together in an interesting and compelling way um and and then then therefore it's clever I think this has or again now you see me or a heist movie where that's the same idea but this felt like it it was manufactured like the cat for example is throughout the whole damn film um and I kept trying to make the cat make sense in my mind of like, the cat's the MacGuffin. The cat has like, you know, it's like fucking Men in Black, Orion's Belt. The cat has the thing on it. The cat. Um, the cat. And she's going to have to rescue the cat. Yeah. Um, ultimately, the cat scratches Brian Cranston randomly, even though the cat was not aggressive at any point in the movie. It suddenly attacks him. And I know he's mean to him, but a lot of people are mean to the cat. And then it, it does represent like her her dual life in a nice way mm-hmm. that she's clinging um, to, and it, it, it's, but it, it it's like yeah it, it yeah. But ultimately, I was just like the cat is sort of like this loose element. Everything felt like these loose pieces that didn't really come together in a tidy way. But there were so many threads that they were working into this um, that it ultimately just felt like a big mess of things and then tonally uh, like like there's there's no one like you like we're saying there's no one to like be shocked by this world and then i think the world is so over the top compared to like this grounded world where she's a writer where it's like again i feel like physics are different by the end of this movie than what we're expecting and like it's hard to accept that difference where like i just i don't i i i don't think at least not for me it didn't land anything okay. except for just being really fucking weird yeah it and is it is, like, it is again, uh, yeah <laughs> but nothing ultimately like it all it's all very confused it's all very unclear to me it's all like i can get like vague vibes of what happened but it all just feels very messy okay and then the action gave me nothing the comedy gave me nothing so like i again the the most entertainment i got was as a writer watching this going like the fuck is going on yeah maybe you should read the book there's a book Mm mm-hmm so who wrote it? I know that Nobody was a knows. big thing. I guess it, Matthew Vaughn. I don't know. I'm guess, yeah, apparently I'm guessing it's a Matthew Kingsman. Vaughn. It takes place because, in the Kingsman universe. Right. He tried to. He tried to do a um, a split for us. And uh, like I, I, I do think more movies should do that. Like I like movies that are secretly part, like sequels or prequels. But I'm so un. I'm. I, like I said, I only watched the first Kingsman. You haven't watched any of them? No. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, <laughs> apparently Hitler has a Thanos reveal in one of them. Yeah, in the most recent one he does, yeah. Yeah. See, I just don't... I, I, it's co- sort of the same with superheroes, where it's like, it's so much stuff um, in a world that, like, I just can't get invested in at Well, this point. what got me... I liked their relationship. That's what really got me invested her and sam rockwell yeah as they yeah. Gra- oh, as yeah. they, they gradually re- gradually reveal that okay he's not a stranger he actually knows her okay he's her he not he's not not only does he know her he's actually her mentor okay not only is he, is he her mentor they're actually together they've been together for many years they were together right up until she vanished it just kept escalating their relationship um and I just, I, they're both super charming. They both do great in this movie. I just loved watching them together. I, if it hadn't been those two in the lead role, for sure, I would have felt differently about this movie, I think. Yeah. Um, but you have know, just two, know of the, two of the most charming fucking people. Like Sam Rockwell, you wouldn't think it to look at him maybe, but he has charm spilling out of his pockets. He's so fucking good. Oh, um, he's terrific. And, and, and Bryce Dallas Howard is great in this. 
Um, yeah, they're both terrific. It's I just sometimes the sometimes the script doesn't fucking matter. Honestly, like sometimes you're just vibing with the movie. Uh, movies aren't supposed to be puzzles anyway. There, it's 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 a dream. It's all it's dream logic. Um, but of course, the more you use it, the more people know. It, it, anyway, I don't need to go into film theory, but <laughs> it's just it's it's one of those movies that it sort of. I think you can you can definitely rip it to shreds uh, easily because it's not a tight ship. It's not a good script. It's a bad script. <laughs> it's objectively a bad script. It is. There are some horrible lines in it. Like uh, Bryce Dallas Howard is always giving 110%, but there's a couple of lines, particularly when they get to the vineyard with Sam Jackson, where she is just saying what her character is in yeah. in like textbook English. And it's like, okay, like you could have done another pass on that. Uh, so I won't dispute you with that the, the screenplay is garbage, but I think that there does need to be room for when people come together to make something that is uh, better than what was on the page. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't, it's I get hard because even the, rela- even the relationship you're describing was something that I, I assumed getting in, going into it of like, well, they're going to know each other. We're going to give a, we're going to have a romantic. It's uh, I, the most, okay. that's the most predictable version can I, of what their characters can be. I agree with you that they're extremely charming. And if the, if that's working, yeah. then you can forgive a lot of this movie. Yeah. But like saying it's a bad script, like I think we're on the same page. The difference is that you were, you enjoyed it more, but like, let me ask you this. Was the action doing anything for you? Like him flying, onto a chair from a grenade yeah, like the henry cavill I, I, again, thing again again i was looking at it like archer the movie so i thought it was funny that that makes sense him bursting out i just didn't yeah i didn't find the action funny enough i guess i actually found i got what they were doing with the cavill going back and forth i actually found that disorienting which was surprising like i actually i knew what they were doing so i wasn't confused but it started making like the action hurt to watch um which I, I, I just, uh, I, I don't, I think that's very subjective. I just didn't know that right, about and, myself. And, right. And the disorientation is definitely intentional. Um, right. So, uh, but yeah, though, I, I agree with you. It was a little disorienting. Not, not enough that it, yeah, gave they me, did it, it didn't give much. me a headache or anything. I just thought like once I got, like, I was like, okay, I get it. And then it kept doing oh, it. Oh, but I like that they um, keep doing it because it, it, it's Looney Tunes, the Chuck Jones cartoon. It's like, right. it's, it's showing you, it's like where it's the, saying one thing and showing you another it's showing you henry cable doing this awesome cool graceful thing and then sam rockwell's doing it he's just barely desperately getting through it by the skin of his teeth oh yeah i guess what i mean is in the scenes they did it too much meaning that they were going back and forth too much in the scenes does that make sense Where like i don't mind them going back to it in the film but when they would do it in the scenes they would blink back and forth from it and it, it like too much um, again, that's it's subjective. Yeah, I think, I think maybe it would have been better served because it's not always for for a comedic effect. It's sometimes well, actually, but I didn't dislike. Yeah, sometimes it just happened. I didn't dislike that either because the idea is that she says at one point, "Yeah, I see Argyle sometimes. I talk to him. It makes me feel better." Like I right. rec- I recognize that. So sometimes he appears to her in that respect, uh, even yeah. even mid fight, and it's just like he'll just be doing something and it's not like markedly different from whatever Sam Rockwell's version was, but he will turn and look at her and say, everything's going to be okay. Right. Yeah. Sometimes they weren't Sam. It, I like when you were talking about Sam Rockwell having struggling, I didn't immediately pick up on that. Cause it's because, not all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so like it's, it's, and again, like the fighting choreography is the same. So it doesn't feel like sort of he's it's, it, they're doing the same thing, but it's like, it's like watching a, a sober world-class ballet dancer and a super drunk ballet dancer. Like they're doing the same thing. It's just Sam Rockwell's version of it is sloppier. Right. And like looser. I, like he, he hits the ground in really weird ways all the time. Like, apparently, yeah. Apparently, I, at least from the interviews I was reading, Matthew Vaughn cut this to be PG-13. Is that what happened? Oh, yeah. I definitely noticed that. 
Like that's yes. one thing I wanted to talk about is Matthew Vaughn's Looney Tunes approach kind of needs to be R rated. Yes. Cause and it, I think it, that it takes a lot away. I, I think it takes a lot of the impact away from it. Like you kind of need that extra little Tarantino splash of, he does it way more cartoony than Tarantino uh, is violence. Oh, if you've yeah. seen kick ass. But I think that's yeah. kind of might've been one of the key things that made it fall flat for me, which is that I didn't really see a difference between the fantasy and, and the real life, for the most part, it was it wasn't big enough that difference. And I think originally it was that was the probably violence key. was going to make the difference. Yeah, yeah, I think that would have really helped. Is that like he's shooting people in the head in this, and there's nothing, no blood, and it's like that is so such a stark, noticeable thing. Again, from a movie starting with we're going to show you this fantasy spy world, isn't this silly? And that you have to have something different than the, that, and it wasn't enough. Where it's like yeah. if they had, if it would been like really, like brutal, well, um, there's one, that would there... have been, I think, a funny enough difference. Where you're showing Henry Cavill doing like these expert moves against these guys, and then you cut to Sam Rockwell like gouging an eye out out of desperation. You know what I mean? Like they're just, I yeah, think there you... really need to be a bigger difference. <laughs> like when he perfectly falls into the chair. Sam Rockwell's version should have been him landing with like scrapes all over his face because a grenade went off in his face. You know what I mean? But nothing like a grenade goes off in his face in that scene, and he's just as fine as Henry Cavill is. It's a flashbang. And bang, so, like, yeah, yeah flashbang. Like, he, yeah, he should be on the ground screaming because his eyes don't work. Well, and, like, I mean, his, sh- that's not the universe, though. I know, but that's I think the problem with doing that bit, where it's this this the tone flashing of this, in between two universes that are exactly the same in tone. The tone of this movie is Henry Cable gets blown back into the chair and he has his legs crossed very adroitly and he's just looks suave and debonair like a like an ad for scotch and he just looks over right. very like smoothly at Bryce Dallas Howard. He's like, yeah, check this out. And then Sam Rockwell's basically upside down in the chair. <laughs> just like singed from the grenade blast that's the speed of it it's not like a dramatic difference it's just he's a clown and henry Cable henry cable is a surgeon right and i yeah i just wasn't enough for me that's fair yeah because I mean, sure. it's, there's two very different he's still got a grenade that right, propelled him ridiculously right, across the room into a chair he's still archer he's still an unkillable super spy yeah, exactly. It's just he's a clown. He's not this precise machine that she imagined. And then it turns out that she's imagining herself, really. And she is kind of I, this precise machine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to market this because I think if more audiences went in understanding what you're saying, it would have gone down a little smoother. But the movie the, the movie calls attention to it. Again, the movie and the marketing was like, here's this crazy spy world. Now here's the real world. And it keeps cutting back and forth. And like what you're saying is that Henry Cavill represents like her confidence, her like not like her fantasy world. It's her subconscious self. It's like it's her actual self, right. I assume. But by by calling attention specifically to, to the action scenes and going back and forth and not having a difference, it was me just watching being like, I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Like. There, I don't know what, there, you're, what observation you're trying to make about the difference between... There was a difference. It just wasn't stark enough for you. Yeah, it absolutely wasn't stark enough. When, like, later, you know, they bounce a cat, like, you know, 30 feet in the air and stuff like that, where it's the it's the same world. It's the same world, ultimately. Like, that, like you're saying, that's the reveal. The reveal is this crazy, cartoony spy world is the real world. Yeah. So there's no contrast and it like should going have been a, it, sh- it should have been more two. it should have been more clear or more extreme of a contrast to start out with yeah there needed to be some ex- contrast and then there, they right? gra- and then as the movie progresses they gradually meet in the middle until you realize excuse me until you realize bing oh it's the same right or yeah or it's a muted version where again like Brian Cranston is literally in a vi- uh, an evil villain lair you know he's in a doctor evil lair yeah and i'm like and so, like, 
I don't think it's my fault. Like, I think the movie does, does this. They called attention. They start with this ridiculous action scene that they're like, but that's just a fantasy. And so they're putting the audience in that headspace, right? Where you're like, okay, now I'm going to, ex- I'm going to, I'm expecting uh, some sort of contrast to that, what you just presented. And they don't do a big enough contrast. And he kind of wants to have his cake and eat it too there. Cause he wants to work it. And like, I, it seems like he wants to make both movies, which makes yeah. sense because the, the, sting at the end of the post credit scene that reveals that this is apparently a Kingsman prequel is that they are at least probably not after this weekend, but at the time they made the film and released it, they were planning on making the fictitious Argyle books that Ellie Conway writ wrote right. into movies themselves. So it seems like he wanted to make both movies. Right. Like he wants to make oh, yeah. the, he wants to make the movie about Henry Cable and John Cena as over the top international super spies because everyone wants him to make that movie, and right. uh, he also wanted to make this movie, which is about Bryce Dallas Howard realizing that she, you know, it's it's the long kiss goodnight with all these wacky characters. Uh, I think he's serving two masters in that way. I, I definitely think that's that's true because it's not it's not as clear or as stark enough of a difference. Like I picked up on it. Or it made sense to me, but I was also vibing with the movie and I wasn't right. like I didn't I wasn't trying to stay ahead of the movie, which I think is what happens when you're not enjoying it. Uh, yeah, you, you're just thinking you yeah, just start thinking about all lying. the sh- all, you start thinking about all the shit that doesn't hang together. <laughs> yeah. So but yes, yeah, so I just didn't I wasn't trying to stay ahead of it. So I, I just didn't have that experience. I was I was with it from the the start as a as a dumb breezy movie i would have watched with my mom um and that's that's all it is that is a perfect description for it in my opinion the thing is i i do agree with you because i i don't think it came across in this podcast i enjoyed myself i did i was laughing again just at the movie the way now you see me is because here's the thing i don't I, I actually think of it the exact same way. Now You See Me is another example of I think there's a lot of talented actors in that, and I think everything falls flat, meaning like there's not a single joke in how you, Now You See Me that lands. There's not a single action there's scene in single Now You See Me There's not a single line in that Now lands. You See Me that yeah. lands. <laughs> it's all very dumb, and I, I the audacity of what the movie chooses to do on top of the fact that there are legitimate things that I don't think the movie realized, like the, you know, spoilers for now you see me, the villain at the end, his motivation is that his dad drowned in a safe because the safe worked correctly. And he's mad at the safe company for working correctly. And you're like, wait, what, what is his motivation? Like it's little things like that, where I don't think the movie, I mean, I guess it's the villain. So they do want you to, um, I don't know. Again, you have that's a different movie that you have to pick apart, but it's like it's one of those movies where you're not sure if the filmmakers know what's dumb and what's not. And I just I got that same vibe from here where I was like I can't tell how much you're aware how stupid like if these twists, do you think these twists are clever? I don't like I just don't know what the filmmaker thought they were doing when they were making this again it felt like a colossal swing and a miss to me um because ultimately it was just like a weird dumb movie where nothing made sense i had multiple people walk out of the theater by the way it was a yeah it was a silent theater um and that's what that's the thing is like i i know why this movie bombed (laughs) that that's very clear to me I think the marketing, it was kind of grading on people. I think people, I, I noticed a lot of people thought that John Cena and um, Henry Cavill were more in it than it is. <clears throat> I, again, it has no action. Like the action is like, it's not John Wick, right? It's not like, oh, you got to go see it because of these fight scenes. Um, it's just sort of silly. And like, I don't know. Like you said, it's a good middle of the road movie to watch with your family or something like that. But everything it kind of has, I feel like is done in different films, but more cohesively, including the main plot, the, the spy. Yeah. We keep deep undercover. We keep mentioning long kiss. Good night. That is objectively a better film. (laughs) Right. Like, and so like, 
it just feels like this movie like it just doesn't have us enough of an audience like it's not offering enough i think ultimately like i get why it bombed that's not that doesn't speak to the quality of the film or like enjoying it but i can see why audiences saw this movie and went nah i'm I'm good (laughs) And no one's walking out of this movie like telling their friends about it. Like I just don't think there's that much word of mouth, <laughs> except for people kind of making fun of the movie as being like weird and over the top. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's um, again, it's a fascinating movie to me. Like to me, my perspective on it is that it it perfectly, intricately weaved through all these ideas and sort of missed them all for me. Um. Which I find fascinating, like, the, like and a I, bullet passing through Sam Rockwell's chest. Exactly, and I kind of, I like, I, we should watch this on Friday night. I want to watch this movie again. I'm, I think other people should watch it. I think it's fascinating, and like, I don't know if it finds an audience. That's great, you know. Like, I think it might. I think it might be more appreciated on video because it's such a wild swing. It's it's a weird movie. Um, it's it's tonal whiplash. If you're not not even really tonal whiplash, but I mean, it is a little bit because like you mentioned, the cat scratches Brian Cranston, the cat scratches Brian Cranston's eyes out. Right. Uh, which, which might be shocking if you've been listening to the, this entire podcast up to this he point. He shoots people in the head. Yeah. Like it, it, this should have been our murders Rob Delaney. Right. That's the thing. Like who's going to bring their kid to this? It's too, like it's, it's supposed it's, to it's, have blood. It's like a, it's like a spoof for a very specific person. And there's clearly right. not enough of those people. <laughs> right. No, to, it, to make it, uh, cause I think this movie costs 200 million, which that's a problem in, in and of itself. Uh, there's, I don't think there's enough people who are into this weird bat. Like this should have been like a $60 million movie. Yes. Um, it, 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 it sort of like it, it but but that's I, what I, I mean I, I'm like I don't know why they made this I don't anyway, know why my, they made my, this. my point is is I suspect this will find an audience because I do think it works you just have to be its specific audience like this is way more of a niche movie than it was marketed as you mentioned Congo and I actually want to go back around to that because I think that's actually a very apt comparison. I love Congo, but like we've talked about this, Congo, Congo is fundamentally a broken film, meaning that oh, it's, the it's, advertising it's... campaign. <laughs> right. That's the a ad- baffling movie. That's a movie I watch over and over again just to marvel <laughs> yes. at each decision that's made on a second by second basis. Right. So you mentioned like like it's adver- it was advertised like from Michael Crichton, a movie about killer it's ad- gorillas. It's advertised and then an what you learn. Yeah. Yeah, what you learn is the gorillas don't come in until like 15 minutes before the end. Yeah. So it's like things like that where structurally you're like, why did they think we wanted to watch them going to the gorillas for most of the movie? That's such a weird choice. That's my feeling of this movie, which is like I was delighted by its weird choices where it's like, why did you think this is what people would have wanted? Like it, it's such a weird series of choices to me Listen. and tonal tonal shifts i'm always that it, again I'm always, it's fascinating i'm always pro weird yeah and i, I, that's I, I am, i'm of the firm mind that just because a movie's weird doesn't make it bad um that's why i can't hate this movie yeah it's it, just that it's it's i think the movie fails the most on its logic but it's like i, f- I feel like that's kind of like i don't know it's it's tough because it's interior logic has to be sound too so it's i don't know it's a tough question it's just it's complicated like yeah. when i first it's, it's, came it's, out of this movie i didn't know how to feel about it camp is really hard to do <laughs> and yeah. it's it's almost impossible to do intentionally so yes. and this movie's not fully camp uh, make no mistake there, but there is there is a camp element to this film <laughs> <laughs> right it's just it's 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 like we, we've talked about plenty of times before like the difference between a movie like birdemic and a movie like sharknado which is trying to be oh my right. god can you believe how stupid this is so I, th- I think this movie is is earnestly doing the thing that it's doing and it just it it's looney tunes it's in a cartoon universe you're with it or you're not i i, I think that is my opinion of this movie i recognize that the script is horrible um but i think everything else about the movie was was done with enough talent that 
this was just like what it, it's this is popcorn uh, and and this is a, a yeah uh, i i i uh, totally enjoyed myself watching this movie it's 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 not good but it's a now you see me yeah it's a now you see me it's, it's a movie that me. belongs in 2004 which I, th- I i think now you see me is also in that but it's it's, it, it's for me that, it's yeah. what i guess what's fascinating is it's kind of like you've been to enough open mics where like someone goes on stage and they have like props and they're being really weird and you can't tell if they know they're being weird and it's like you feel slightly uncomfortable like that was my experience where i was just like i couldn't I ultimately couldn't tell what the movie wanted me to think. That's um, like where I'm like, did you want me to think this action was impressive? Did you want me to think you were being clever here? Did you want me to think you were being like tongue in cheek? I, I know it. I know it's trying to be funny, obviously, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but the same way now you see me is that right now you see me like the part where they're going through the, um, the metal detector scene. They're like throwing the card to each other. You remember that scene? Vaguely, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're they're doing like a magic trick where they're getting searched and they have like a playing card that has like a chip on it to hack or something. Oh, and yeah. And they keep like palming it and throwing it. That's one of those scenes where I'm like, do you think this is clever or do you recognize that this is stupid and we're supposed to be laughing at it? And I couldn't like, with you know now, what I mean? With, where with, it's now, like, with now you see me, I, to me, they think everything is clever. Like that's that's right. what I was what I was talking about earlier when I said everybody's so serious and now you see me. That is a straight. That is a stone faced almost heist movie, which is why I love it so much. Right, because it's it's, it's premise is nakedly hilarious, but they're treating but there were, they're they're treating it like it's um, Ocean's Eleven. Right, but I genuinely don't know. Still, I I I, I agree with you that it's a little easier for now. You see me because they take it a little more. But they're la- they're doing jokes in that there's movie. Some, that movie's there, playful. There's it's, jokes it's, in it. Yeah, there are. It's they are over the top. It is supposed to be charming. It's supposed to be kind of funny. But I can't tell if it's trying to be clever. Whereas, like a similar thing as Sam Rockwell getting shot, where I'm like, Did, is this supposed to be clever that she like amazingly shoots him through? this one part in his heart like in her book and then the reveal is that that person the hacker is really alive and was the person who suggested it where i'm like yep that was a now now you see me moment i was like yeah it was right where it's just like i can't tell if they want us to think this is clever because it's not it's It's not clever i think it's just a sandbox that i like to to, to play in like uh, national treasure you excuse is a you, great example. You excuse everything in that movie because you love treasure hunting movies. Exactly. No, no, that's a great. That's a great <laughs> example. So, and I think National Treasure obviously is a more successful movie, both monetarily, monetarily, and obviously in in terms of how many people enjoy it because that was a big hit. But like, it's the same thing where it's dumb as fuck. Yeah. None of it makes sense. It's just, are you vibing with it or are you not? Yeah, and I would argue uh, Matt, National Treasure films are bad movies. Yes, they are. Um, <laughs> they they actually they actually have very little to offer um, unless you like treasure hunting movies. In fact, even the stunts they're, like they at least do real pr- stunts. Pretty boring. <laughs> they're pretty boring. They do real stunts, which I, I I'm going to give them one point for National Treasure. But even the stunts they do, if you recall, aren't very interesting like car chases and stuff that are very standard issue right the, um, the un- uninteresting they did it for real but they didn't do anything interesting it's like yeah we yes. really drove that car down the street it's like you did yeah you sure did yeah they'll you didn't jump need the to. car every now and then <laughs> um and then they're not clever uh they're not funny um that's a perfect example yeah justin bartha in those films is man <laughs> Yeah, and he's actually, supposed to be the comic relief, and it's like he's it, like the villain. It's weird to say, like that puts it into perspective because I I actually think National Treasure films shouldn't have been as successful as they are. No, they shouldn't have. They shouldn't. They have did made not. The money they, they did made. not deserve to be as successful as they were. That's part of why, again, I'm not mad at this movie because this movie didn't succeed. This the, he Matthew Vaughn made this movie, and most audiences went like, mm, no, I don't know what this is. That should have been what happened with but National ag- Treasure. But again, Although, I'll I mean, say this again about- it's the same thing I've been saying, right? You're either vibing with it or you didn't. And way more people vibe with National Treasure. So it deserved to succeed. Yeah, but okay. Here's what I'll say is that 
the reason I think more people vibe with National Treasure is National Treasure is is as stupid as it is. It's fake smart, like the Da Vinci Code. Yes, it's very fake smart. But as stupid as it is, it's consistent, meaning that like you go into the movie, you kind of know what you're watching. And I think for a lot of audiences, they didn't know what they were watching here. Because again, it keeps introducing... I think, I think it's one of those things, it's as Res Letter Media says it, you might have no, not noticed, but your, your brain, brain did. did yeah. it, it, by like presenting this, the fake spy world, for example, your brain is assuming something that's going to happen. And then it sort of doesn't. By the advertising being very like, here's Henry Cavill and, and here's John Cena, I think a lot of people assumed that was going to be a big factor in it. And it wasn't. They're in a few scenes. I think John Cena's in two scenes. That's I it? think the movie really needed to set its tone early and didn't. Um, it takes too long to establish it. That's true. We, we, we spend a little bit. Well, we, you need to spend uh, some time with Ellie as, as Ellie. Um, but yeah, it, it, I, I agree with that. I think they needed to simplify it. But I think the problem is like, I think the basic premise spy writer learns that what she's writing is true because she's a sleeper agent or whatever. I think that that is doable. Um, but I think tonally is the issue where it's like it just throws so much at you tonally where you have to, I, again, like I, I'm i just speaking about how the majority of audiences, I believe, perceived this. And again, I think that the trailers didn't do because the trailers, I think most people were like, oh, I know exactly who Argyle is based on these trailers um so like it didn't do them any favors by being like don't spoil the secret who is argyle somebody's argyle who could it possibly be and it's like well it's bryce dallas howard right um and that's all to say that national treasure if we're comparing the two is like we're a dumb treasure hunting movie and then that's exactly what they are that's exactly what the movies are from beginning to end and so it's easier to find an audience when like you call your shot very like early and i think this like it's going to take a lot longer to find its audience because i don't think it quite know i guess like that's the thing it, i don't know because now, now it's connected to kingsman which has a big fan right. base so i don't think it'll struggle for that long to find an audience that's the thing is they probably should have just said it's a kingsman movie um i don't think it was like uh, i i think I think that's probably an issue because Kingsman definitely has found its audience, right? It has enough of an audience, but I don't think, I think the Kingsmen are at this point, they're doing the math, right? Where they go like, these movies make this much money so we can spend this much money on them. But that is hinged on Kingsdom fandom, Kingsmen fandom. And so like it, this removed that. So yeah. I, I, yeah, I think, I think they made a lot of missteps here. And you're right. Is like probably down the line, this will get a bigger boost for people who like this specific world, but it should have said it. I, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I, yeah, I like, have, I have a feeling this is going to be one of those movies in 10 or 15 years that gets all those retrospective articles written about it being like, were we too hard on our <laughs> I don't think they were though. I think ultimately I think this movie Again, just the self-contained movie is the two hundred million dollar price tag makes it difficult to root for. That's for sure. Right, and again, I love a good big wild swing. I'm not sure why studios are like Matthew Vaughn. You get to do this because um, he's made the money consistently in the past. Yeah, but yeah, they should understand he made the money consistently maybe, by growing a fan a, base around the Kingsman. Maybe he's a dude that you're like you have eight weeks to shoot, and he comes in in six. Like maybe that's yeah. it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just, this movie made a lot of mistakes obviously and a lot of a lot of those were from the marketing perspective i would say and like hiding that it's a kingsman doesn't do them any favors i think they should have leaned because as we mentioned on hypecast this past week they when the the script was first acquired they said in the press release that it's about uh, an author who gets swept up in a spy world and finds out that her novels are true. Like they should have just, I, uh, like they should have just hint, had, had that be the, maybe market it that way. Be ex more explicit about it. I don't know. Maybe that, but I, I'd actually argue they should have led with the Kingsmen. Like, uh, so 
Split is the other example, right, of them doing this thing where it's a secret uh, prequel or sequel. I think w- and it's it's like case by case. I think with Split, M. Night Shyamalan has a baseline audience, right? And so people were going to go see the M. Night Shyamalan movie. And that was made cheaper, right? That it, was made for way also, less. It also didn't hurt that Split was generally considered to be really good. Yes. Yes, that didn't hurt. And so that's all to say that he could he could hide a unbreakable sequel without advertising it. This, like, go, go back and watch the trailer. One of the first things they do is go, from the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughn, right? And everybody laughed at that. Because I don't think, I think they didn't realize that Matthew Vaughn isn't the pull that they thought he was. Like, I think Kingsman is the pull. Yeah, from the um, maker of and- Kingsman is what you need to say. Yes, I think right away from the maker of Kingsman probably would have done more. I don't think Matthew Vaughn was a big pull. And then, of course, the twisted mind of was an immediate like, Ugh. yeah, like, that's a, it's a it's a joke. It's a meme. Right. And so like they completely it's from the imagination of M. Night Shyamalan. They completely didn't understand the audience's relationship with this filmmaker. And then I just think that like it's a Kingsman has such a niche audience that they really needed to push that more than anything else, I think. But yeah. then ultimately, I don't know. I, I, I also think the movie itself just has some issues that general audiences, I just, for the most part, I don't think this is for a lot of people. I don't know. I think it is for, I think it's for a less discerning crowd for sure. Maybe, I, I, but, but I think it'll, I think more discerning fans more genre fans more film nerds will find their way to this movie i I think or film geeks rather i think certain types of genre geeks will really dig this movie and find their way to it after a while but what genre um it's hard to pick like i said i I, as soon as this movie started i was like oh this is archer uh archer's a good comparison it's like it's hard to but just in the same way that like when national Stre- when national treasure starts rolling and you're like oh this is fun like it was just like something about like funny spies and looney tunes wiley coyote cartoon violence in the real world that's like part of my like i'm into that that's part of my bag like right. i, I, I just really think- i really liked kick ass uh which is interesting because i did not like the comic it's based on um so i just I, I, I can't describe who that is, but I know they exist because I'm one of them. So, like, I like Kick-Ass, too, but I would argue that with Kick-Ass... Kick-Ass is a better movie, uh, hands it down. Also, <laughs> it also handles the violence like violence, right? That's kind of the secret of Kick-Ass is it's over-the-top violence, but then there's blood and there's actual consequences and it actually gets dark in some places right but the, con- uh, the consequences the are still superhero consequences like yes he's indestructible kick-ass himself is indestructible right uh, and the yeah. characters are like kind of grounded and A little so bit, yeah. i think what it is is that li- like there was nothing there's no blood in this right so it's like that that cartoony violence idea i i don't mind either but I think I need something to humanize it. It, it where needs it's the like, blood. It's because if it's if it's just Looney Tunes, it's just Looney Tunes. Like I, I definitely think this needed the R rating because you can you can tell where he's edited it out. But it, this right. style does kind of need the blood the way that Matthew Vaughn does it. Like, it, like obviously, sort of like, Fast and the Furious did it successfully for a while. They don't. They haven't done it in a few films without no. having blood. But like. I think that's what made Kick-Ass work. It was it was right. the Wile E. Coyote stuff, but it was Wile E. Coyote's rocket skates malfunctioning and then his feet explode. Right. And like you could pitch me on the idea of what if we take a cartoony spy movie genre, but then like ground it in real violence or real human moments, right? Like, again, Last Action Hero has that moment where he's like, every time I come home, there's a guy in the closet and I have no relationships. I'm really sad and lonely where you're like, oh, wow. okay, we're going there with it. You know, Um, incredible scene because it starts with an all time joke, the guy in the closet. And then it becomes this horrible existential scene of what would it mean to be a fictional character? Right. And so, like, 
I, I think like it, it, this could have sold me on let's do a cartoony action spy thriller with dumb gadgets and shit, but let's ground the 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 action in some fundamental way, either with the through the characters or through the the violence, like Kick Ass does, um, or like The Boys does with superhero stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so it doesn't really do that, and so that's what I'm saying where it's like it's almost a lot of things for me but it never really is any of those things doesn't quite check those so, boxes yeah I get it yeah I get it yeah um, but again I mean it's fucking I, I also get it too like once you mention National Treasure I'm like okay I get I get where you're coming from with that um, where it's like you know sometimes we just like stupid fun stuff yeah everybody's guilty pleasures are different um yeah. and, and jealously defended <laughs> so right <laughs> this, is a, this think... is a guilty pleasure that's i think that's the phrase i've been circling the entire entire, entire conversation yeah i'm just not sure who this will ultimately get the attention of if oh, like besides kingsman fans and the that's the thing is i also don't really understand kingsman that much i i kind of want you to watch those because if you liked this, you might like the Kingsman, but they also have these weird tonal issues. The ending of the first Kingsman ends with a butt sex joke, and that's really weird and off-putting. That's apparently like, been deleted from subsequent versions of the film? That doesn't surprise me. And so, like, that's the thing about the Kingsman movies is that, again, it's not like... it, it Or it's more like how you see me, where it's like, I just don't think there's intent here where it feels more like someone who's like, and then this happens and then this happens. Boom, crash, boom, crash. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. And it doesn't have any rhyme or reason. This didn't feel like that to me. Everything felt very intentional because I knew I was picking up what he was putting down from the beginning. Right. And everything made sense to me in that way. So I didn't get that sense from this movie. Right. I honestly, I didn't either. I think Kingsman was worse with that where, and again, because cool, I think it's, Kingsman was trying to be cool. I haven't seen it, but it, it it has the vibe of like a stew where you just keep throwing stuff in, and you're like, "Ooh, like wouldn't that be cool?" In it, wouldn't that be cool? In it, and it has no rhyme or reason. And it, it like ha- like Samuel Jackson has like a weird lisp, and it feels like something that Samuel Jackson was just like, "Can I do a lisp?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure, do a lisp." You know what I mean? Where it's like just people doing stuff, and it doesn't amount to any bigger picture other than here's a lot of weird silly things it's i avoided it because it felt like unlike kick-ass which felt similar i just it felt like attitude for the sake of attitude again i have not seen it so i i I need to watch it uh but um yeah i just uh, that's sort of why i skipped that one yeah and ultimately i just these movies present themselves to me as action movies and i just don't I also don't quite yeah, understand. Uh, for, I think this this gets away with a little more, but like Kingsman, a lot of the action in that wasn't Looney Tunes, but it was CGI. Like they have Channing Tatum with like a whip and he's doing like whip stuff, but the whip's CGI. And it's like, just get a real guy who can use a whip, right? Yeah, like, we've done that, Indiana Jones. Right. Like, like it's, for me, CGI is to show me something that I can't see otherwise, like a dinosaur or like... Honestly, the ca- CGI cat in this is understandable. Where I'm like, yeah, you need a CGI cat. Well, and they needed him but, to do performance thing. Yeah, just CGI the cat. Who cares? Right. But when he's like hang gliding out of the back of the train, I'm like, just show that. Just have someone do it. I don't know. Because that's not over the top, right? That's just no. A that stab. was the, that was the grounded scene. Like, and that and that in point of fact is we saw that that scene has been in James Bond. It's in Skyfall. Yeah. And have so, just have someone actually do it. I know you still have to do, you still have to fake elements of it, but when it's all CGI, I'm just... Yeah, no, I understand. Got, we, we've been talking yeah. for almost the length of the movie, Dave, so we need to wrap <laughs> this up. Yeah. All right. Um, Bill, fucking anything else you want to say? No. All right. Well, <laughs> I, thanks I for listening, I, I think everybody. I've said it all over the past 80 minutes. Yeah. I think we've reached an accord Yeah. over... <laughs> Over Argyle. Over Argyle. Um, Maybe the longest we've talked about a movie in recent memory. Yeah. Well, it's a fa- I found it a fascinating movie. Um, 
All right, we have a Patreon, folks. Patreon.com slash Gamefully Unemployed, G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y, Unemployed. You can, for $5 a month, you get access to exclusive podcasts like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, Fox Mulder's Maniac, Star Trek Next Futurama, and Spiel Boys. We watch movies every Friday night with our patrons. I'm going to push for watching Argyle. Hell yeah, um, I'll watch Argyle. That... I'm, gonna, I'm going to own Argyle, Dave. Wow. I, all right. It's going we'll to be copy. in my house where I can watch it in Congo whenever I please. <laughs> You should get the laser disc, you know, the uh, Argyle mm, laser disc. Mm, put it out on laser disc, you cowards. Yeah. Uh, is it my turn to say words? Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, we also have a store. Head over to gameplayemployed.com where you can find a link to our Teespring store. We have all kinds of cool original artwork and designs. You can get on t shirts, mugs, stickers, posters, all kinds of things. So slap your spying little peepers onto that. Mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. let's blow up an oil tanker in the middle of the ocean without any regard for what that's going to do for the environment and get out of here yeah fuck the whales fuck the whales they've been saved for long enough <laughs>